Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my complete Dia guide. In this detailed video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about Dia or Dia, talking about her best builds, playstyles, teams, constellations, and so much more. Dia is the newest standard banner character, who has her rate up banner right now, but will be in the standard banner starting next patch. She's a character I've been hyped for since I first saw her, and while in my last video I covered her power level and the sort of controversy surrounding her kit and why she can feel underwhelming at times, in today's video, while I will briefly touch on that, I want to focus on how to get the most value out of this character if you like her and want to use her properly. Before we begin, do note that I had a lot of time to play Dea and try your best teams and playstyles on a media server before she came out, allowing me to make a very detailed guide as soon as possible. Lastly, I also want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested in catching me live. And with all that being said, let's get into it. Alright, now starting things off, let's talk about Dia's talents and what she actually does. Well, first things first, her elemental skill places this field on the ground that will do a few things simultaneously. First of all, it will deal AoE power damage when you use it, and it has two casts. You can use it once and then use it again for a bit more damage. The field you use will last for 12 seconds and will deal passive pyro damage alongside your active character's attacks. This form of passive pyro damage can only happen one every 2.5 seconds, which is in my opinion the biggest weakness of this ability. While it's nice passive pyro application and damage, the trigger rate of it is pretty slow, especially when compared to some other characters, which means it shouldn't be your only source of pyro in a team as it usually won't be enough, but can be a decent form of extra pyro for certain team comps. On top of that, you gained a good amount of defensive utility with this field, as will greatly increase your resistance interruption. As you can see, my charge shot in Ganyu will not even get interrupted by the Geovish app as long as I have Dia's skill protecting her. On top of that, you will also gain damage mitigation with the exact amount scaling up based on your talent level. Do note though that how much damage you can actually mitigate will scale on your Dia's max HP as after a certain point, she will stop mitigating damage. Also worth mentioning that the damage mitigation you're getting isn't strictly reducing the damage you're taking, but instead sending a portion of it to your Dia, she's going to be the one taking a bit of damage over time for your active character. Do keep in mind that your Dia, however, will have this damage reduction from her passive talent 60% when it's triggered, which is her main form of defensive utility, alongside the fact that you get good resistance interruption through your skill and your passive for 9 seconds after using your skill, allowing you to charge shot, normal attack, or do whatever. While this isn't as tanky as a shield or the same as a healer, this means that she's a pretty tanky unit when paired with her other passive that will also heal her, but do keep in mind that this healing will only happen when your Dia's under 40% HP, and it can only be triggered once every 20 seconds, so it's a bit weird how this passive works, but it's basically just free healing on her if she is low. Something else to note is that her skill has a 12 second duration with a 20 second cooldown. This means it has an 8 second downtime, which is unfortunate, and even if you recast your skill after waiting a bit, as you do have a long window to reuse your skill, as you can see, it will not actually reset the field's duration, but will keep the same initial 12 seconds from when you first used it. Moving on, her elemental burst is a very unique ability, where Dia will enter a special state, automatically punching enemies in front of her, dealing a decent amount of pyro AoE damage. Now what I mean by this is even if you're not pressing anything, your Dia is going to automatically be punching. As you can see, I'll press Q and I won't click any button on my uh, mouse or keyboard and I'm automatically punching. Now you can do this faster by clicking, but even if you don't click like I did at the start of this clip, while it was slower, your deal was basically still forced to attack as that's what her burst does. Also, be sure not to jump during your burst as it will just cancel it. Like literally, let's say you're attacking and you jump, you are no longer in your burst. I don't really know why that's a thing, but it can be annoying. Just make sure you don't jump. Easy to play around, just annoying if you get like frozen or something as jumping will instantly cancel your burst. Also worth noting that when you use your burst, you pick up your field, it'll pause its duration and your Dia will be given a bunch of resistance interruption when she's inside of her burst. Other things about this ability to note are that the cooldown is 18 seconds and the duration is 4 seconds. Now, to be fair, in practice, the duration is a bit longer because your attacks have like hit stun and there's animations of your burst and stuff. So you will be on field for a bit longer, but still, you're only going to be on field for like 6 to 8 seconds with a 12 second cooldown, which gives this ability a lot of downtime. This is like the biggest downside of her burst. You have a decent amount of damage inside of your burst, but it only lasts for 4 seconds, which means you have a ton of downtime. You have to swap to other characters, use her in a different way, maybe use her as a more defensive support, and then have her burst for 4 seconds of burst damage. This means that there will be different ways to play Dia, different ways to build her, and while we'll cover all of them in this video, they will typically revolve around either primarily using her skill and ignoring her burst, or using her burst for these 4 seconds of pretty good damage, and then using other characters like Shangling in the downtime. This ability has an energy cost of 70, and its damage will scale both on your attack and max HP, and so will your skill's damage. Because of that, while attack and HP are both viable on her, attack percent is typically going to be better, but I will go into more detail on this in the artifact section a bit later in the video, so do stay tuned for that. Other things to note are that inside of her burst, her burst damage is considered, well, burst damage. All of her punches aren't normal attacks, but are burst damage. And since they're not normal attacks, even if you are punching, this means that triggering off-field supports that trigger off of your normal attacks, like Sing Cho, 
Yelan, or Beto won't work inside of your burst. It's very annoying as characters like Sing Cho and Yelan are broken and some of the strongest in the game, and they just won't work with Dia as her burst won't proc rain swords at all, as you can see from the footage. And so because of that, her kit overall is pretty unique. She has a burst that deals decent damage, but only lasts for four seconds, and a field which has eight seconds of downtime, but still okay uptime that gives you defensive utility and passive pyro damage, although the rate of pyro application is once every 2.5 seconds, which is not that fast. Because of that, I now want to give you guys my honest thoughts on Dia, her best playstyles, and how strong I believe she is. Starting things off for her playstyles, there are usually going to be three. The first, more standard one, is one where you use her for her burst, use your skill, use your burst, and then deal four seconds of decent damage on field during this duration in, for example, a mono pyro team, where you're going to be buffed by your Animo support, your Bennett, and then also have a Shangling there to help deal damage. And while yes, in a team like this, I'm going to be honest and say that Shangling, Bennett, and Kazuo will be carrying and will be doing most of it, Dia does have some synergy with an okay amount of pyro damage, some pyro particles, and she will make for an okay option in a mono pyro team. You can also run her as a hyper carry in a team that I will cover later, although I personally recommend this one less. Now, the other playstyles involve using her more for her skill as a utility support. Her elemental skill, while the pyro application is not that fast, it can be enough for something like a melt Ganyu team as a second pyro option. For example, if you're running a Ganyu burn melt team, which I mentioned previously but will cover more in the team comp section, your Nahida and your Bennett will be proccing burning, leaving pyro on the enemy and allowing your Ganyu to melt her charge shots. On top of that, the defensive utility of her skill, giving you resistance interruption and damage reduction, can make it to where you can charge shot for free as if you were shielded without being interrupted. Lastly, before addressing her power level, I do want to say that you can technically use her for Burgeon, but I don't recommend it because her pyro application is very slow, especially when compared to someone like Toma, who applies pyro once every second from off field. Slow pyro application is even worse than it seems in a Burgeon team, as if you accumulate too many dendro cores and then pop them all at once, only two of them will deal damage to a specific enemy because of the way Burgeon works. With that said, you can still use her for Burgeon in, for example, a Hyperbloom team. She can clear up the excess cores and still do pass of burgeon damage, so it's a playstyle that I will cover. I will cover all three builds, although this last one is a bit more niche. Also, something interesting I noticed while streaming is that your skill won't trigger burgeon sometimes if the enemies are too big and their hitbox is kind of weird. Like in this clip where I'm fighting this rune guard, even though he's entirely in the circle and is taking pyro damage, the AoE of the pyro damage is like all inside of his hitbox, I think. It's not hitting the cores, it's not burgeoning anything, so you really have to like get close to him or work around it as its consistency will vary based on the enemies you're fighting, which can make burgeoning very inconsistent alongside your very slow pyro application, which is why Burgeon isn't my preferred team, but still one I'm going to cover nonetheless. Before moving on, I want to say that regarding her power level, I made a video addressing that, so go watch that if you want more information. But what you need to know through my, you know, day one of testing and using her before she came out is that there are teams that are functional for her, but she's definitely not a strong or meta character by any means. What this means is that as a limited character, if you care about efficiency, you shouldn't pull for her. And as a standard character, there are usually better options. Now, this doesn't mean she's not usable. This entire guy will be dedicated to giving you guys her best situations, her most functional teams, as there are some of them. Like genuinely, there are ways to make use of her, like putting her in a team with characters like Bennett and Kazuha and Shang Ling, who are all broken, or for her defensive utility, if that is something you value, alongside its power application. So while meta-wise, she is underwhelming, at least as of right now, obviously she may get buffed with a new artifact set or support characters that work with her. There are ways to make sure functional and work if she's a character you like and want to use, which is what I will be focusing this video around, as personally, she is one of the characters who I really do like at least design-wise. Now, lastly, before moving on, your talent priority will depend on how you use her. If you use her primarily for her skill, level that. If you use her primarily for her burst, level that. And you can usually ignore her normal attacks unless you play her with a C6 Bennett. All right, now with all that out of the way, let's actually get into how you want to build your Dia, covering your best builds for every type of playstyle. Now, for Dia in particular, I want to start with her artifact stats, actually, before going into the sets, because what stats you want does vary heavily based on, you know, what type of build you're going for. Starting things off, for a generic Dia playstyle where you're trying to maximize her personal damage, you are going to be using her for her burst and it's four or so seconds of decent damage. In order to do that, to maximize your Dia's personal damage, the stats you're going to be looking for are the following. First of all, crit rate and crit damage are typically going to be optimal as it will just buff all of your damage by the most amount. Other good stats include energy recharge, attack percent, and HP, with energy recharge being necessary until you have enough to use your burst on cooldown, and then after that, you don't really have to worry about it. The exact amount you need highly, highly varies, but do keep in mind that Dia doesn't actually generate that much energy. However, pairing her with other power characters Characters, which is typically going to be part of her optimal teams anyways, like in a mono pyro team, which we'll cover later, can greatly alleviate how much energy recharge your Dia will need, making it typically in a strong meta center team around 160 to 180, which is still a lot of energy recharge, but it is manageable. With that said, this can highly vary as your energy recharge needs can be much lower or also much higher. So test out what works for you. After that, HP percent and attack percent are both nice, but it's worth noting that attack percent 
content will be better than HP, generally speaking, with the only exception being at C1, HP becomes comparable to attack percent to where both are viable, but attack percent is what I recommend for a standard C0 Dia as a better substat. And also I wanted to mention that elemental mastery can be viable as well if you are proccing reactions such as Vaporize, Melt, or others in a DPS build. How good EM is varies based on how often you're proccing the reactions and the team you're running, but it can be a good substat if you are spamming reactions. Because of that, for your main stats, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't have enough energy recharge, you can go for ER on your sands. Otherwise, attack percent is the best, with HP percent being okay if you have your first constellation, but otherwise it's just worse than attack. For your goblet, you definitely want power damage bonus, and for your circlet, crit damage or crit rate are going to be the best for your damage. Before moving on to other builds, I do want to reiterate that you shouldn't feel bad to use an energy recharge sands on Dia. As we mentioned earlier, she does need a lot of energy recharge, especially in many different teams that you can run her in, even in like Mono Pyro. So in ER sands, if you don't have enough ER on your substats or weapon, can definitely be a viable choice. With that said, for other Dia playstyles, here are the builds you can go for. For an off-field burst support build where you're using her skill for its passive pyro damage and pyro application, attack percent will still be better than HP, and you still want to stack crit, you just no longer need energy recharge as you can ignore your burst. In a team like that, you would want to go attack percent on the sands, or HP, but it is worse, pyro on the goblet, and still crit on the circlet. Lastly, if you want to play Dia in a burgeon team, although these teams can have their problems and aren't my personal favorite for her, they can work, and you would want to run elemental mastery on every single piece, sands, goblet, and circlet, in order to maximize your burgeon damage since it scales on elemental mastery. Now with that said, which artifact sets are you actually going to be looking for on all of these Dia builds? Well, starting things off, for a DPS Dia where you're using her burst, Emblem of Severed Fate and Lava Walker are going to be the two best sets for her. Emblem of Severed Fate is the general go-to as it's sufficient to farm and usually the best overall given how much energy recharge you need as we saw in the last section. This is because on top of giving you 20% energy recharge on the two-piece, the four-piece will convert your ER into elemental burst damage and when you're using your Dia's burst, all of the damage that you're doing all of the punches are considered burst damage, making this set really, really powerful. Because of that, the Emblem set is what I recommend generally speaking, but there are other good options like the 4-piece Lava Walker, and since a lot of Dia's best teams involve her in like a mono pyro team, where everything's gonna be pyro affected, you will have basically 100% uptime on this set's effect, buffing all of your damage. Other good sets include mix and matching 2-pieces, like Crimson Witch of Flames, Noblesse Oblige, or even any of the attack percent 2-pieces, going for the best substats that you have. 2-piece of Millilith for HP% percent can be viable as well, and even the 4-piece technically can be viable, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because while Millilith is better for a supportive playstyle, which we'll talk about next, even as a DPS, while Millilith won't give you the most damage, the HP percent is valuable and you'll buff your other party members, which can oftentimes be the stars of your team anyways, so I did want to mention the 4-piece as being viable, but generally, to maximize her personal damage, Emblem or Lava Walker are better. With that said, for that off-field supportive playstyle, the tenacity of the Millilith is going to be your go-to. The 2-piece gives you 20% HP, as we saw, and the 4-piece will buff your party members, giving them a free 20% attack every time your skill hits an opponent, even if you are off field. Because of that, I highly recommend this set in those teams, but other supportive options exist, notably 4-piece Instructor to buff your EM, or even technically 4-piece Deepwood if you're running a Dendro team and can fit Dia in there for some reason, it can actually be an okay option, but it's typically not what I recommend as the Tenacity of the Milla set is just a staple for a skill Dia build. Lastly, if you're using her in a Burgeon team, to maximize her personal Burgeon damage, you want to go for either the 4-piece Guild of Dreams or the 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost. With the Flower of Paradise Lost typically being better, but Gilded is a more efficient domain, so usually people have Gilded and not Flower, but both of these are good for Virgin. Or you can mix and match two pieces of EM sets, or you can still use a supportive artifact set to buff your team and lose out on a bit of personal Virgin damage, with any of the supportive sets I mentioned previously being viable. Oh, and last thing I wanted to add is that Dia might get buffed in the future with her own artifact set. If that ever comes out, it's probably going to be the best for personal damage, but for now, these are the best sets, depending on your playstyle. Oh, also, and I'm recording this a bit later, I just wanted to mention that you can technically go a full tank Ocean Huge clan build, deal a bit of damage from your passive that self heals you, and then just have a bunch of HP so you'll never die by stacking HP on everything. It's not a meta build, I don't recommend it, you won't have damage, but you'll be a tank, it can be fun if that's something you enjoy. I thought I should mention it as a fun build, but not the strongest one. Alright, now hopefully that section wasn't too complicated, as I know there are many different ways to build Dia, but with that said, let's actually talk about what weapons you should use on her, again, for any playstyle. First things first, for a damage dealing Dia, a more standard damage focused playstyle, the weapons that you want are the following. First of all, your best in slot will be Dia a signature weapon, the Beacon of the Reed Sea, as it gives you a ton of attack, HP if you're not shielded, and a really good stat line of a pretty high base attack with 33% crit rate, so just a really good claymore overall. While it's the best, other 5 stars aren't that far behind, with Redhorn and Wolf's Gravestone typically being the two others to go for, but pretty much every 5 star claymore is viable, although these are the best three, alongside Scoured Pride if you need the energy. So if you have a 5 star claymore, usually just use it, but if not, there's some pretty good options as well. First of all, for some gacha claymores you may have, the Akumaru is really good for burst damage and attack percent, and the same can be said with the Lithic Blade, especially if you have 
have party members from Liwei in your team, such as Shangling or others. Another option which is very similar in strength and also a free to play one if you did the event quite a while ago is going to be the Fish Claymore, the Luxurious Sea Lord, which you could get and fully refine for free through an event. This is because it gives you burst damage and attack percent, but I know the event is a bit old by now, so you may not have it. If you do though, it is your best free to play option. And if not, as free to play options, you'll either go for the Prototype Archaic or for the Inazuman Blacksmith weapon, which is usually a bit better if you can use all of the ER that it gives you. Whereas if not, you can go for Archaic for the attack percent. Other good options include Energy Recharge Claymores, such as Sacrificial Greatsword, or uh, one of my personal favorites being Favonius Greatsword, for energy for your Dia and also for your other party members. Lastly, another decent option to mention is the Blackcliff Slasher, which is technically free to play if you have the Star Glitter, as it gives you crit. And also regarding Serpent Spine, while this is usually like an amazing Claymore on any character, if you get hit a single time, Dia's passive will constantly tick and make you lose Serpent Spine stacks, making it to where your stack up time is going to be really low, like you're not really going to use its passive too much. And while it is still viable for the crit rate, and if you have like two or three stacks, it's still a good weapon. Generally speaking, it's hard to use consistently on this character, but I at least wanted to mention it in case it's your only option or you just don't get hit. One also, if you're wondering, a four star like the bell can be viable. Now, keep in mind, attack is usually better than HP, but HP is still fine. It gives you damage when you're shielded, and it also gets better when you're C1 and HP becomes even better. So finally, this weapon is viable, but it's still not the best option. Like there are better ones. With that said, I'll put a weapon ranking on screen now for both a mono pyro team on the left and a team with mona and some vaporizes on the right. Do keep in mind that this weapon ranking will highly vary based on you, your team, substats, and all that. So use it only to get a general idea. Also, the free to play best in slot that all weapons are being compared to is written as Droll, as the Jeff refused to change it. But that's just referencing the Fish Claymore, which is the name we gave to the fish. Now, with that said, for the other Dia playstyles, here are the weapons you can go for. For a pure support build, where you're running Tenacity the Millilith, I believe it's essential to go for Favonius Greatsword if you have it, as the amount of energy you're going to be giving to all your party members is honestly invaluable. You can build a bit of crit rate on her, proc its effect, give your team energy and also attack percent through your artifact set, and that is going to be her role in a lot of those teams. If you just want to maximize her field's damage, though, feel free to use any of the offensive claymores I mentioned previously. And also a more niche option is you can use the Forest Regalia in a Dendro team, getting a leaf that will increase the elemental mastery of whoever picks it up, but it's more niche and not usually as recommended, although it is viable for some energy recharge and an EM buff. Lastly, for a Burgeon Dia, you can go for pretty much any claymore that gives you elemental mastery. While there are many options like Mailed Flowers or Rain Slasher, and they are fine, I think the best two are either the My Kyra Aquamarine if you do have it, as it will convert the elemental mastery you have to attack percent for your other party members, buffing the hyper carries or the damage dealing characters you're running alongside your Dia, while also giving her EM for Burgeon, making it the best option overall. With that said, if you don't have this weapon, the other go-to I would recommend for a Burgeon build is going to be the Blood Tainted Greatsword, as this one will give you more elemental mastery than any other Claymore, despite it being a 3-star weapon. Since all you care about is your EM for Burgeon, and obviously your character level and stuff, the low base stack doesn't matter, and the EM stat you gain here is very nice. Lastly, in a team like this, you can still use Fav if you just want energy for your team, but typically I do recommend the EM Claymores that I mentioned. Overall, depending on your Dia playstyle, you're either going to go for a crit weapon, a Favonius, or an EM weapon, whichever one fits the playstyle that you chose the best. Alright, our next up, let's talk about Dia's Constellations. And since she's a standard banner character, you might be getting some of these passively just by playing the game and losing 50-50s. And so they are pretty important to keep track of, as some of them can give you pretty significant increases in damage. First of all, your first Constellation is one of your better ones, as it will give you additional scalings to both your skill and your burst based on your max HP. This will make HP percent very similar in strength to attack percent for her, making it to where an HP sends and HP substats are more viable and pretty close in strength to attack percent. Also note that you gain bonus HP through this constellation, and since building HP will become similar to attack, that means you can be tankier if you do build HP, allowing her to have an easier time tanking damage. Next up, your second constellation will increase the duration of your elemental skill the second time you use it, increasing the duration of your field by 6 seconds. On top of that, it will give you a slight increase in damage to your skill passively when your active character is attacked. And so this constellation is nice for the extended duration, whereas C1 will be like the main damage increase for an early constellation. Moving on, your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, and your fourth constellation will passively give you energy and HP while you are inside of your burst. This will therefore decrease how much ER you need and will also heal you, making it a bit easier to run a team without a healer given Dia's defensive utility. And lastly, your sixth constellation is going to be a pretty big damage increase that makes her a much better character in my opinion, as it will extend the duration of your burst and increase your crit damage and crit rate while you are inside of it. In fact, your crit rate is increased by 10% inside of your burst, and then every time you crit inside of your burst, you will increase its crit damage by 15% and extend its duration by 0.5 seconds, up to a maximum of a bonus 60% crit damage and 2 seconds of an extended burst time. Because of that, you have more uptime on your burst and more damage, so it is definitely a pretty decent constellation, but not as strong as like a limited banner character's C6, in case that's what you're wondering. Overall, these constellations are nice to get passively on a standard banner, with C1 and 2, especially C1, being nice for a bit more damage and quality of life, although 
although it isn't the biggest increase. All right, next up, let's talk about one of the most important sections of this video, which is regarding Dia's best teams. This is going to be split into three sections as with the rest of the video, depending on which playstyle you want to use. Starting things off, we'll talk about how to get the most value out of your Dia's damage in a more hyper carry damage dealing role. For this, the go-to teams are the following. First of all, Mono Pyro is going to be usually the best place to use a Dia. This is because she has decent synergy with other Pyro characters, can give them energy, and use her burst to attack on field for its entire duration, while you have Shangling's Pyronado spins, and you also get the buffs from your other characters like Bennett and your Enemo support, who will typically be Kazuha, but you could use another one if you don't have them. In fact, the slots in this team are relatively flexible, like you can use pretty much any Enemo character, but Kazuha gives you the most damage with the Verdescent Venera set and his passive talents. For the other characters, I do highly recommend going Shangling and Bennett, and while yes, Shangling, Bennett, Kazuha are broken characters who can carry any team, Dia can be the last slot and have some value, as I said, as she will be able to attack from on field and support you as well through her skill giving you damage reduction and some passive pyro energy. Because of that and the strength of the other characters, this is typically going to be regarded as Dia's best team for the team's damage overall. Now with that said, if you want to make your Dia vaporize, you can actually play this team right here, where you're using a hydro character, usually someone like Mona, to allow you to vaporize a few hits on your burst. In a team like this, you can still swirl pyro with your Kazuha, buff your team with Bennett and Kazuha as well, and then just apply Mona's omen, which will give you a few bits of hydro for your Dia's burst damage. A pretty fun team, although not the strongest overall in my opinion. If you're wondering why I'm not recommending Dia with Sing Cho or Yalan, do keep in mind, as we saw earlier in the video, it doesn't work. When you use Dia's burst, Yalan and Sing Cho's burst will stop working and won't fire any hydro arrows or rain swords. If you want to play her in a melt team, again, not the most optimal, but it can work. You can use Kaya and Kazuha, swirl both Cryo and Pyro, and use Dia as your on-field auto attacker. And it's also worth noting that you can use a second Cryo character instead of Kazuha and have a two Pyro, two Cryo team that is a bit more quick swappy. Keep in mind, while Kazuha is the best option in all of these teams, you can use someone like Sucrose or another Enemo option. Lastly, worth mentioning that if you have a C6 Bennett, while it isn't necessary for any other team by any means, you can actually make a team where you use Dia for Bennett's Pyro Infusion and don't use her burst, and then Synchro's Rain Swords are gonna work, and you can just proc a bunch of reactions like Vaporize and Burgeon by just auto attacking on your Dia. Do keep in mind though, Dia's auto attacks aren't the best, so I don't recommend this playstyle, but it's viable if you have a C6 Bennett and wanna do it. Overall, though, I've tested a lot of different teams for a carry Dia build, and I genuinely highly recommend a Mono Pyro team to maximize her and her team's damage. Now for Dia's other playstyles, here are the teams that I would recommend. First of all, as I mentioned earlier in the video, a Ganyu Burn Melt team is going to be one of the teams where Dia actually has a good role. While her defensive utility isn't as consistent as something like a Zhongli shield, and Zhongli is a bit more optimal, he can make this team a bit harder to play as the rotations are very tight. What Dia does is give you a bit more Pyro application, which lets your Ganyu actually use her abilities, as any team like this, you typically wouldn't be using your burst, as it would not allow you to melt your charge shots. With Dia, you can oftentimes get away with bursting and still melting your charge shots due to the passive power application that your Dia gives you. On top of that, in a charge shotting team, you really need a shield or some form of resistance interruption, which your Dia's elemental skill will give you. For more information on how this team works, you can check out my Nahida guide where I explain it in more detail, but in general, you will press E on Nahida, then apply Pyro and Procky Burning Reaction, then use your abilities on your Dia and Ganyu, and spam melted charge shots. This team can work, and Dia is actually better than Toma in a team like this, as you don't want to be normal attacking on Ganyu and Toma. Thomas shield works with normal attacks, so Dia actually has a role here as a viable option if you want to play this. With that said, you can use Dia as this off-field support in pretty much any team where you just want a tank and damage mitigator, someone to reduce your damage and be a sort of tank. It's not that optimal, it's not what I typically recommend as a playstyle, but it can work for the reasons I mentioned earlier of having a supportive artifact set and weapon and having access to the pyro resonance with another pyro character. An example of a team like this that I want to mention is going to be using her for her resistance interruption for a Scaramouche team who's a character who could desperately use some some form of resistance or a shield. Other teams like this include using Dia with Yoimiya or Hu Tao as a second pyro option, ideally in a double hydra team. Lastly, for a Burgeon Dia build, I would recommend using her alongside either another pyro or another electro character. I usually prefer hyper Burgeon, like running an electro character like Kuki, to proc hyper bloom, but then you'll also get some passive Burgeons with your Dia, collecting any of the cores that your Kuki's relatively slow electro application may have missed. And the same can be said in a Sino team. Do keep in mind that in a team like this, yeah, you can use someone like Toma, who has faster pyro, but but Dia does remain a viable option. Now, if you want to use Dia as your only Burgeon option, there are some issues with this. As we saw earlier in the video, some enemies' hitboxes are like too big to Burgeon, and the Pyro app is very slow. So while it is still viable, and you can play it if you want, I typically do prefer playing her alongside another character, either Electro, Pyro, or even Anemo, who can trigger the cores as well. And so yeah, while I do think Dia will have better synergy with future characters that aren't out yet, for now, these are her best teams through my extensive amount of team testing. If there's any new teams we find, it'll be in a pin comment. But for now, these are her best ones, depending
depending on your play style. So with all that being said, we're now going to get into a DPS showcase of my Dia uh, in a mono power team. Do keep in mind, obviously the other characters will be doing a lot of damage too, but we're going to be using Dia uh, C0 right now, R1 of her signature weapon on a four emblem and a pretty good ratio of 81-82 with a lot of energy recharge and also 8-8 eight, eight talents. With that said, I really hope this guy was helpful and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. And so, yeah, that's about it. I really hope this guy is helpful. He is a character who I've been waiting for for so long. And honestly, power level wise, you know that I'm a bit disappointed, but there are usable teams. There are ways to make her functional, which I tried to show in this video, the best ways to play and build her. If there's anything you want to add, it will be in a pinned comment, as I do think she will get stronger in the future with new artifacts and characters and stuff. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay, what do you want me to do? Just burgeon? Yeah, just don't use Sino and try to burgeon. Okay. Look at just look. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not burgeoning? The hitbox is too high.